So at the end of Tuesday's lecture, we had done an example looking at whether or not a proposed mechanism was plausible. And we looked at making sure that our overall reaction matched our overall reaction that we are expecting. And then we looked at our intermediate steps, or elementary steps, figuring out which rate matched up with our overall rate law. Now in the next example, what I want to look at is what happens when you get a rate law for an elementary step that includes an intermediate. Just because that rate law has an intermediate does not immediately, or does not initially, rule this out as a plausible mechanism. What we want to do is look towards the other elementary steps to try and cancel out that intermediate in the rate law. So when we have an intermediate in the rate law, we're going to use the fast elementary step to replace that intermediate. So we're going to look at this example here. We're looking at the formation of hydrogen iodide from combining hydrogen and iodine. And we know that our rate law is this one here, first order with respect to hydrogen, first order with respect to iodine, so second order overall. And our proposed mechanism is the first step of iodine molecule breaking apart into two iodine atoms. Then those two iodine atoms interacting with hydrogen molecule to form two hydrogen iodides. Now we ended, or we talked about on Tuesday's lecture about how typically in a proposed mechanism you would be told which reaction is fast or slow by just the words fast or slow being added uh, to that mechanism. Okay. In this case, we haven't been told that, uh, but this, these double reaction arrows tell us that this step one is going to happen very fast. Okay. Anytime that we see the double reaction arrows, the forward and the reverse, that means that this is going to happen fast. Which makes step two our rate determining step. So to determine if this is a proposed mechanism, we want to take our step two and write our rate law right, using our reactants and the coefficients as the exponents. So we get our rate constant K times our concentration of hydrogen. That's going to be first order because it has a one for a coefficient. Then we're going to multiply by our concentration of iodine the atom of iodine, which has a coefficient of two, so it is second order with respect to iodine. Now the problem with this rate law is we have our intermediate. Atomic iodine is not in our overall reaction, nor is it in our overall rate law. So we need to get rid of this intermediate. And we're going to do that by using our step one, using our fast equilibrium. Because what we know about this being fast is that our forward reaction is going to happen at the same rate as our reverse reaction. So this is information from step two though. We know that the rate of the forward is going to be equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. So we want to write rate laws then for our forward and our reverse reaction. And we're going to keep our rate constants, uh, keep them to the first reaction, but dictate what's forward and what's reverse. So we'll have K with the subscript 1 representing the forward reaction rate constant and then k to the negative one, 
as our reverse rate constant. So our rate law for our forward reaction, we have K1 times our concentration of our reactant, which is I2. Then the rate of our reverse reaction, our reactant is 2I. Our rate constant is K to the negative 1. So we have K to the negative 1 times the concentration of I squared. And our coefficient becomes our exponent. And we're going to use this relationship here to solve for our intermediate. So we're going to use this to replace our intermediate that appeared in a rate law for the rate determining step. So we want to use this to replace the concentration of atomic iodine squared. So algebra, we isolate our I squared, divide both sides by K to the negative 1. And we have concentration of I squared is equal to K1 over K negative 1 times the concentration of I2. So we can now plug in this expression for I squared. And to keep my rate constants kind of grouped to which step they are, I'm going to make this K2. So our rate, from our rate determining step, we have K2 times the concentration of hydrogen. And that's first order with respect to hydrogen. And then we have our concentration of I squared. So we're going to use our expression here. We have K1 divided by K to the negative 1 times our concentration of I2. We put all of our constants together. Remember, K is just a constant. So we have K2 times K1 divided by K to the negative 1 times the concentration of hydrogen times the concentration of iodine. We can combine these together just into one rate constant. So we'll have K times the concentration of hydrogen times the concentration of iodine. This now matches our overall rate, or our overall rate law. That was what we were given initially. So our rate law then matches, so this is a plausible mechanism. And another piece of information, sometimes uh, this can be asked, is our K value would then be equal to K2 times K1 over K to the negative 1. So make sure when you're looking at plausible mechanisms, just because a rate determining step gives a rate law that doesn't have the same components of your overall rate law, you have to make sure that you go through the process of trying to replace that intermediate to see if you can match your overall rate law equation.